ओके गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल माय नेम इज रवि रंजन ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ प्रेरणा क्लासेज आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग एट द जे ई मेन टू फिजिक्स पेपर आई हैव सेट सी सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन नंबर वन डेफिनेटली इट इज बेस्ड ऑन इलास्टिसिटी एंड इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेस सो वी हैव स्ट्रेस इज फोर्स बाई एरिया ओके फोर्स इग्जेटेड बाई अ मैन इट इज दट्स वे सो यू मे राइट इट एज एम जी बाई एरिया क्लियर नाउ वॉट टू डू द वैल्यू ऑफ मास इफ यू रियरेंज इट देन डेंसिटी इन टू वॉल्यूम एंड वॉल्यूम इज रिटर्न एज ए इन टू एल इन टू जी divided by a okay so area will cancel out so clearly you can say a stress here is directly proportional to length since a uh, dimension linear dimension increases by a factor 9 so you can say uh, stress increases by a factor 9 that imply new stress stress new which is equal to 9 times of the initial value so that imply correct option h 1 option 1 is correct okay okay next question uh, it deals with the kinematics uh, we have if you are projecting some block with the speed u what will be the velocity at any instant if acceleration is constant it is given by the expression you know u plus at clear under gravity acceleration is g and its direction is vertically downward so what will be the expression actually v equal to u minus gt so nature of graph is a straight line uh, and slope will be negative clear so now Uh, up to maximum height, uh, its velocity is positive, and after that, its velocity will be negative. But slope of the curve, uh, it gives an idea about the acceleration. And since acceleration is constant, so you can say uh, graph will be straight line like that. So correct option here is three. So option three correct. Three correct. ओके ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अगेन बेस्ड ऑन द कैनमेटिक्स बेसिकली इट डील्स विथ नॉन इनफॉर्मली एक्सेलेटेड मोशन हेयर वेलोसिटी एट टू इंस्टेंट इज गिवन इनिशियल स्पीड इज टेन मीटर पर सेकेंड एंड यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ के एंड गिवन टर्म्स इज इनर्जी आफ्टर टेन सेकेंड एट टी इक्वल टू जीरो Velocity that is v naught, which is equals to 10 meter per second, clear? And uh, at t equal to 10 second, velocity is not given, but kinetic energy is given. Kinetic energy is half m into v naught square. Sorry, 1 by 8 m into v naught square. It is given. So if you rearrange it, half m into v naught by 2 whole square. That imply at 10 second velocity here it is uh, v equal to v not by 2 or you can say 5 meter per second clear so we have a velocity at two instant at t equal to 0 and at t equal to 10 second now since expression of force is given it is f equal to minus kv square that imply acceleration expression is uh, uh, force by mass so it comes uh, minus k by m v s square clear so you have to find out the value of k and you know the value of velocity at two instant so you may write uh, a as a dv by dt so dv by dt it will be equal to minus uh, k by m into v s square now if we rearrange it dv by v s square it is equal to minus k by m into dt 
on integration it comes at t equal to 0 velocity is 10 and uh, at t equal to 10 second velocity is 5 if you solve it it comes k equal to 10 to the power minus 4 unit clear so correct answer is correct uh, option is uh, here it is third okay okay next uh, question comes from the work uh, based on work power energy uh, that means set of four uh, here force is given as uh, 60 it is a variable force and you have to find out the work done by that force in one second uh, if you apply here uh, work energy theorem clearly work done by all forces it is equal to change in kinetic energy so work of the given force it is equal to half m into v square okay since initial kinetic energy zero so it will be half m into v square where velocity at which instant at one second clear so our main task to obtain velocity at one second now force is given what would be the expression of acceleration again it will be force by mass so it comes 6 by mass here given is 1 kg so 6 by 1 into t that means 60 ok now if we rearrange it a is dv by dt so dv by dt equal to 60 now it comes dv equal to 60 into dt on integration at t equal to 0 velocity since it starts from rest so velocity is 0 at t equal to 1 second uh, velocity comes so from here we obtain v equal to 3 meter per second clear so what could be the kinetic energy it will be half mass given here is 1 and 3 car square so final answer comes to 4.5 joule so correct option is uh, 1 is correct okay okay the next setup that means uh, question number fifth uh, which is based on the moment of inertia one thing i want to say about that question uh, uh, because uh, it has some ambiguity uh, since there is no information about uh, mass and density whether it is constant or variable uh, but i am taking i am assuming here uh, density and mass of the uh, cylinder is constant okay why assuming that uh, if we consider moment of inertia of a cylinder about the axis which is passing through the uh, center of mass and perpendicular to length like that so expression of moment of inertia you may write directly as if we consider as a thin rod then its moment of inertia about that given axis is ml square and since its section is a disc so and it that axis we have the diameter so it will be 1 by 4 mr square clear so moment of inertia of that cylinder about the given axis is this one and it depends on length and radius here you have to find out the uh, mean uh, ratio of l by r for the minimum value of the moment of inertia since it depends on l and r so first we have to replace one of them in terms of the other so if we assume mass which is equal to density into volume pi r square into length i am assuming here mass and density as constant so the value of r square it will be m by rho pi l clear now put the value here then moment of inertia it will be uh, 1 by 12 ml square plus 1 by 4 m into and the value of r square here is m by uh, rho pi l clear now it totally depends on length so for the minimum value of its moment of inertia di by dl should be equal to 0 that is for i minimum clear from here you will obtain the value of l by r which is equal to under root of 3 by 2 ok so correct option is 
correct option is uh, here it is one and another point i want to say it is the one of the best question of that paper clear uh, next one okay okay next one which is based on that means question number six uh, it is based on the basic concept of torque in this setup we have to find out the angular acceleration of rod about the hinge point so at the soon instant that angle is theta okay if we indicate the forces acting on the rod one of the force is the mg and other force acts from the hinge point data city fh but if i want to obtain torque about the hinge point then torque of that force definitely it will be zero since it it passing through that point so only we have to consider the torque of mg about the given point so if we write here torque about h so we have to consider the torque of mg so mg into perpendicular distance here is l by 2 sin theta i do know torque is moment of inertia into alpha so i about that point is 1 by 3 ml square and alpha so the value of alpha it comes 3g sin theta divided by 2l so correct option is that imply option 1 is correct okay okay uh, next question it uh, uh, comes from gravitation and uh, just a basic concept of gravitation for uh, uniformly solid sphere we have gravitational intensity as uh, for x less than r it will be gm by r q into x and what for x equal to r it will be gm by r square and for x greater than r it will be gm by x square so if we draw the graph of gravitational intensity let us say g here with uh, distance uh, x here is the d okay so for less than r since it is directly proportional to x so graph will be a straight line passing through origin and uh, at x equal to r since function is continuous uh, but not differentiable and after that uh, for x greater than r it is inversely proportional to 1 by x square so it will be nearly like that so correct option is that imply option 4 is correct okay okay now next one that means question number 8 uh, it uh, comes from the calorimetry chapter uh, and you know principle of calorimetry heat gain equal to heat loss so here uh, a calorimeter made of copper okay it contains water and mass of water here it is given 170 g and calorimeter mass here is 100 g both at temperature it is given it is at room temperature and room temperature is 30 degree okay in this calorimeter and water setup a ball of copper and its mass here is again 100 g drop into it at temperature t and it is given equilibrium temperature which is equal to 75 degree c since equilibrium temperature is greater than 30 degree so definitely there is heat gain by the calorimeter and water setup and heat released by the uh, copper ball okay so if we apply the heat gain equal to heat loss then expression will be heat uh, loss by the copper ball Uh, mass and its a specific heat is given 0.1 and what will be the fall of temperature since if temperature is t and final equilibrium temperature is 75 so t minus 75 and it is equal to heat gain by the calorimeter and water so it will be uh, 100 into 0.1 and uh, 75 minus 30 that means 45 plus heat gain by water it will be uh, 
170 and a specific heat of water you know in calor calorie unit is 1 and uh, change in temperature here uh, it is uh, 45 degrees clear on solving T comes to 885 degree C that implies option 2 is correct ok ok next question that means set up uh, 9 it is again uh, based on the elasticity and uh, you have to find out the temperature right and related to the bulk modulus ok we have bulk modulus which is uh, beta or you can say that it is given k for external pressure it may write you may write it as p into uh, dv delta v delta p by delta p clear and uh, we have coefficient of linear expansion is given uh, so you may relate it as uh, final volume it is equal to initial volume 1 plus 3 times of alpha which is the coefficient of volume expansion into rising temperature from here the value of delta v by v it comes 3 alpha into delta theta so if we take that in 1 and 2 and solving this to solving first and second that imply change in temperature that means delta T which is rising temperature and it comes uh, P by 3 alpha into K. So correct option is uh, option 1 is correct. Okay. Okay. Next question. That means set up uh, nine. It is again uh, based on the elasticity, and uh, you have to find out the temperature right and related to the bulk modulus. Okay. We have bulk modulus, which is uh, beta, or you can say that it is given k for external pressure. It may write. You may write it as p into uh, dv delta v delta p by delta p clear and uh, we have coefficient of linear expansion is given uh, so you may relate it as uh, final volume it is equal to initial volume 1 plus 3 times of alpha which is the coefficient of volume expansion into rising temperature from here the value of delta v by v it comes 3 alpha into delta theta so if we take that in 1 and 2 and solving these two, solving first and second, that implies change in temperature, that means delta T, which is rising temperature, and it comes in uh, P by 3 alpha into K. So correct option is uh, option 1 is correct. Okay. Okay. Next question. That means eleventh uh, one. Again, it comes from heat chapter, or it is based on the basic concept of it. We have P V equal to N R T. So, what will be the expression of uh, number of mole? It will be P V by uh, R T. Okay. In the given setup, volume is given. V here is the thirty meter cube, and uh, pressure again it is constant and the value of pressure is 1 into 10 to the power 5 Pascal both are constant only temperature changes since temperature increases so you can say uh, final number of mole will be less as compared to initial so NF will be greater than NI ok so what will be the expression of NF from uh, minus NI it will be PV if we take common PV by R so 1 by Tf minus 1 by Ti and the expression of Tf here Tf is 273 plus uh, 27 so it comes 300 degree 300 Kelvin sorry and uh, Ti it will be 290 Kelvin on solving it comes uh, minus uh, 2.5 into 10 to the power 25 that imply option 4 is correct 
ओके ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट मीन्स ट्वेल्थ वन इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द चैप्टर एस एच एम इन एस एच एम वी हैव टू बी कंसिडर लिनियर एस एच एम हेयर इट इज मेन पोजिशन एंड इट इज पॉजिटिव एक्सट्रीम पोजिशन एंड इट इज निगेटिव एक्सट्रीम पोजिशन ओके सो इन वन ऑसिलेशन दैट मीन्स इट इज एट इक्वल टू जीरो एंड इट इज एट इक्वल टू टी वाई फोर सो काइनेटिक इनर्जी चेंजेज लाइक के एट टी इक्वल टू जीरो इट इज मैक्सिमम एंड हेयर इट विल बी मिनिमम अगेन मैक्सिमम एंड दैट टाइम हेयर इज टी इक्वल टू टी वाई टू ओके सो if we uh, look at the option so correct option here is uh, 4 here at t equal to 0 kinetic energy maximum it decreases and at t equal to t by 4 it will be 0 and again it decreases for t equal to t by 2 and then at t equal to 3 t by 4 it will be again minimum that means here it is 0 and again at t it will be maximum so correct option option 4 is correct okay okay next one that means question number 13 uh, it is based on doppler effect doppler effect but uh, Uh, here a speed of detector or you can say observer it is half of the speed of light so we can't apply the normal formula of doppler effect of sound air here basically uh, we use the formula doppler effect of light uptrend frequency which is given by the expression frequency of source uh, into 1 plus uh, speed of observer divided by c divided by 1 minus speed of observer divided by c if we put the value here it comes 10 uh, gigahertz uh, into 1 plus half divided by 1 minus half clear on solving it is 10 root 3 gigahertz so correct expression will be 17.3 gigahertz that implies option 3 is correct okay okay next question it is based on the torque of uh, that means uh, sorry uh, question number 14 uh, it is based on uh, uh, torque on dipole placed in electric field we have expression of torque it is uh, p cross e okay now look at the question here dipole is oriented as it makes an angle theta with the positive x axis so it it like that clear let us it is y and x axis so in vector form that dipole it is written as uh, p cos theta i cap plus p sin theta j cap clear or uh, you may write it as uh, px i cap plus and that means p by j cap basically you have to find out theta so theta here uh tan inverse of how much it will be p by by px clear now we have two value of electric field if electric field even used then torque comes to tau k and if electric field e2 used then it comes negative of the uh, initial value so if we add up two torque then net torque will be zero so net torque under two electric field it will be zero so it is equal to px i cap plus p by j cap cross uh, e i cap plus second uh, dipole second electric field here is root 3 oh, sorry okay root 3 e1 that means uh, root 3 e j cap okay on uh, solving uh, we have p by by px it comes root 3 so that imply tan theta equal to root 3 so theta will be 
60 degree. So correct option uh, here it will be 3. Okay. 3 correct. Okay, next question that means uh, 15. Again, it comes from the electrost uh, electrostatics uh, of chapter capacitor. Uh, it uh, deals with the basic idea of the cap equivalent capacitance here. Uh, we have to obtain equivalent of 2 microfarad capacitor with potential 1000 volt. Clear? And uh, given capacitors of capacitance 1 microfarad with a maximum voltage is 300. So to obtain 1000 voltage, uh, so we have to consider uh, minimum 4 capacitor in city. So it will be 1200, so definitely more than uh, uh, 1000. But if we consider 3 capacitor in city, then it will be less than uh, 1000. So, uh, minimum capacitor required here in series is 4 but what will be the equivalent of uh, these 4 capacitor since one of the capacitor of value 1 microfarad ok so equivalent of that will be 1 by 4 now to obtain 2 microfarad capacitor so we have to consider 8 parallel branches so 8 uh, uh, parallel branches of a 4 capacitor in series. Okay? So, what will be the total number of capacitor? Total minimum capacitor required it will be 8 into 4 that means 32. So, correct option is 4. Option 4 is correct. Clear? Okay, next question, um, that means question number 16, here setup given at the steady state and uh, we know uh, at steady state there will be no current through the capacity branch here, okay. So total current passing through this branch, clear, so what will be the current uh, supply by the battery? It will be the net potential that means E and in this branch resistance in series it will be R plus R2. Okay. You have to find out the charge on capacitor C. So charge on capacitor it will be capacitance into potential difference across capacitor. Now our target to obtain potential difference across this capacitor. Uh, if we uh, consider this loop, there is no current in this branch, so what will be the potential difference across R1? Definitely it will be 0, ok? So potential difference across capacitor, it is same as the potential difference across R2. Here V cap, it is equal to potential difference across R2. So it will be I into R2. So what will be the expression? E R2 by R plus R2. So charge on capacitor it will be C R2 by R plus R2. Okay. So that implies correct option here it is uh, 3. So 3 is correct. So concept here is no current uh, in a capacitive branch at the steady state. Okay. Okay, next one that means question number 17. Uh, it is uh, uh, based on the KVL, uh, here given circuit uh, as uh, multiple battery and register setup ok, uh, all battery given here is the 2 volt, 2 volt, 2 volt resistance of 1 ohm whole setup is symmetrical, so if we consider uh, potential difference between these two points, so it will be 0, so definitely current will be 0. Another approach you may take, if we consider uh, nodal plane analysis or take potential at this point 0 volt, assuming potential 
at this point as 0 volt. So what will be the potential at this point? Since potential difference is 2, so it will be 2 volt. So at that point it will be 4 volt and that point it will be 6 volt. There is no device, so that point also at 6 volt. Now potential drop here is 2 volt, so that point at 4 volt. Here it is 2 volt and here will be it be 0 volt. So what will be the potential difference across these two resistors? It will be 0. So current across 1 ohm resistor it will be 0 ampere. So correct option that implies 4 is correct. Okay. Okay, next one that means question number 18. It is based on the oscillation of the magnetic needle. We have expression of time period as 2 pi into under root of I by MB, where I is the moment of inertia, moment of inertia, and its value is given here at AJ uh, 7.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 unit. And uh, M here is the magnetic moment, magnetic moment and its value given here is 6.7 into 10 to the power minus 2 unit, okay. And uh, B here is the magnetic field, magnetic field and its value here is 0 0.01 Tesla. If we substitute the value here, it comes uh, 0.665 second. Okay, but it is uh, only for one oscillation. So what will be the answer for the 10 oscillation? So time period for 10 oscillation, it comes 10 into 0 0.665. So it comes 6.65 second. So that implies correct option is 1. That means 1 is correct. Okay, next one that means question number 19. It is based on the electrical instrument and basically the basic idea of conversion of a galvanometer into a voltmeter to VF to convert the galvanometer to a voltmeter a large resistance they are connected in series and uh, galvanometer pile and some resistance it is given here uh, 15 ohm. Now uh, Ig also given here and it is uh, of uh, 5 milli ampere that means 10 to the power minus 3 ampere. Okay and desired uh, voltmeter of the range of 0 to 10 volt. So that means voltmeter voltage is this much. Okay. So we can write here uh, Ig into uh, these two in series. So it will be R plus Rg. That means the potential difference across these two points. And desired value here is uh, voltmeter and that is 10 volt. On solving the expression of R, it comes uh, 10 by uh, and uh, 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 uh, minus uh, Rg and the value of Rg here is 15. So if you if we solve it, it comes 1.985 into 10 to the power 3 ohm. So correct answer is 1. That means 1 is correct. Okay. Okay, next question that means 20th, uh, it is based uh, on the basic concept of electromagnetic induction. We have induced EMF which is equal to rate of change of magnetic flux d phi by dt. Okay, and uh, if we write it as I into R, okay, and I is basically dq by dt, okay. Then uh, we can say charge dq it will be r uh, d phi b by r. Okay. So what to do the change in flux d phi b it will be r into uh, dq. Okay. 
so required change in flux it will be r into uh, total change in flux delta phi v uh, it will be integral i dt and you know integration gives us summation or you can say area under the given curve so what to do the area of that curve uh, resistance gear given here is 100 and area will be half into uh, time is 0.5 and uh, current here is 10 if you solve it comes say uh, 250 waver okay so correct option here is third that imply 3 is correct okay okay next one that means question uh, number 21st uh, it is uh, based on the axis and comes from the modern physics and uh, uh, you know if we accelerate uh, an electron through a potential difference v then its energy will be ev if we assume all energy converted into x rays then uh, uh, energy of x rays given by that expression so lambda minimum we can write here it will be hc by ev but graph here given uh, is uh, log uh, log lambda minimum versus log v so if we take the log uh, log uh, uh, lambda minimum which is equal to uh, log of uh, hc by ev okay and uh, it comes log of uh, hc by e minus uh, log of uh, log of 1 by v uh, sorry uh, it will be plus uh, now uh, log of uh, lambda minimum it will be uh, minus of log v plus log of hc by e clearly that term is the constant and uh, slope of log v here is the negative so graph will be a straight line with negative slope starting from initial value so correct option will be uh, 1 that imply 1 is correct ok ok next one that means question number 22 uh, it comes from geometrical optics and it is one of the uh, good question of that paper uh, so here a diverging lens and a converging lens placed like that focal length of diverging lens here it is given 25 cm and uh, focal length of converging lens is 20 centimeter uh, at a distance 15 centimeter so separation between these two lengths here is 15 centimeter okay in the given setup a beam of parallel light falls so consider parallel beam strike on the diverging lens so definitely they if we consider that way so it divert like that so image formed by the diverging lens at this point since rate is parallel so let us say that is the intermediate image so we can say that distance is the image by the diverging which is equal to how much equal to focal length ok now that image behaves an object for the converging lens so what could be the object distance for uh, convex lens it will be equal to 40 cm and its focal length is 20 cm so definitely object distance it is greater than the focal length of the converging uh, that means uh, image form will be real so at this point final image will be formed so that implies final image is real now uh, you have to find out the image distance let us say that distance is v so we have to apply the lens formula uh, in a real sign convention 1 by u plus 1 by v it is equal to 1 by f and the value of u here is 25 plus 15 that means 40 1 by v equal to 1 by uh, f again 20 on solving v comes to 40 centimeter so distance of uh, uh, 
uh, image from the diverging lens is 40 centimeter. So, sorry, converging lens is 40 centimeter. So, first option is correct. Image is real and distance is 40 centimeter from the converging lens. That implies option one is correct. Okay. Okay. Next one. That means question number 23rd, which is based on uh, uh, Young's double slit experiment. Uh, here it is given two slits. Uh, let us say S1 and S2. Separation between them is a small d, and the value of a small d given here is 0.5 mm. So 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. And the separation between a screen and slits here it is uh, capital D, and the value of capital D is 150 centimeter. That means 10 to the power minus 2 meter. Okay. Uh, now, uh, interference obtained by two wavelengths. Lambda 1 here is 650 nanometer and uh, lambda 2 here is uh, 520 nanometer. Okay. Uh, that point differently it will be the central bright fringe. Okay. Now, uh, we have to find out the point at which both uh, uh, bright fringe Coincide. That means bright fringe formed by the lambda 1 and lambda 2. Or you can say overlapping of interference pattern by the uh, two wavelengths. Okay. We have, let us say, uh, y. So expression of y is capital D by a small d into delta x. Clear? Now for bright fringe, bright fringe, that implies delta x equal to n lambda. Clear? So, if we consider for lambda 1, then bright fringe form at the position uh, n1 d lambda 1 by small d. Okay? And for lambda 2, bright fringe form at a position y2, let us say it will be n2 d lambda 2 by d. Clear? Now, to coincide these two position, according to question, it is given y1 equal to y2 that means n1 lambda 1 equal to n2 lambda 2 clear so from here the value of lambda 1 oh sorry uh, n1 by n2 it will be lambda 1 by lambda 2 okay now lambda 1 by lambda 2 that means uh, sorry it will be lambda 2 by lambda 1 okay then lambda 2 is 52 uh, 520 by 650 so 4 by 5. Clear? Uh, so for first bright fringe uh, at the same point, uh, we have to take n1 as 4 and n2 as 5. For the next bright fringe, we have to consider uh, n1 as 8 and n2 as 10. It is for the first uh, coinciding bright fringe bright fringe coinciding okay and it is for the second okay so according to setup uh, the value of y it will be uh, you have to take n1 as 4 so 4 into d lambda 1 by a small d and if we solve it comes uh, uh, 7.8 mm that implies option 2 is correct that imply 2 is correct. Okay? Okay, next one that means question number 25. It is based on the energy uh, transition of energy. We have delta E it is equal to Hc by lambda. Okay? So expression of lambda that means Hc by E. Now, for the lambda 1, here it is transition from minus 2 e to e. So what would be the delta e? For delta e for lambda 1, it is uh, uh, minus e minus of minus 2 e. So you can say e. So expression of lambda 1, it will be hc by e. Okay. Similarly, for the lambda 2, delta e for lambda 2, it will be how much? Uh, final energy is minus e and initial value is minus 4 by 3. 
so it comes uh, 40 by 3 minus e that means e by 3 so expression of lambda 2 that means uh, it will be hc by e by 3 so required ratio lambda 1 by lambda 2 it will be 1 by 3 so correct option is 4 4th is correct ok ok uh, next set of that means uh, 26 it is based on radioactivity and uh, uh, here uh, radioactive nucleus A transform to B if I consider initial number of uh, number of nuclei it cannot there is no nuclei of B at any instant what will the expression it will be n naught e to the power minus lambda into t where lambda is the decay constant so what would be the expression of uh, number of nuclei of t at that instant it will be n naught minus uh, n naught uh, into e to the power minus lambda t ok you, we have to obtain it is given at time t the ratio of number of nuclei of b to that of a is this much so 0.3 equal to we can write number of nuclei of uh, b to that of a so number of nuclei of b is this much and a that so n naught into 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t divided by n naught into e to the power minus lambda t so basically that expression is 1 minus e to the power lambda t it is equal to uh, e divided by minus lambda t ok from here we can obtain the value of t but we have to find uh, put the expression of lambda so where lambda is uh, using t half uh, lambda equal to ln 2 divided by t half clear so on solving t comes to uh, uh, half life is given t so it is ln 2 by t or we can put here t into uh, log 1.3 divided by log 2 so correct option is second ok ok next one that means question number 27 uh, it is uh, based on the transistor and the basic uh, uh, concept of uh, common emitter configuration common emitter amplifier uh, as we have uh, if input signal like that uh, it is input then we obtain the output as like that ok so clearly there is phase difference uh, of pi by 2 so phase difference between input and output will be pi by 2 it is uh, output ok so we can say option 4 is correct 4 is correct ok uh, next one that means question number 28 uh, again that question comes from the uh, modern physics uh, and uh, based on the modulated frequency we have modulated frequency as uh, cm uh, which is given by the expression uh, ac plus uh, m sine of uh, omega mt uh, into sine of uh, omega t ok if we rearrange it it comes cm equals to ac sin of omega t omega ct plus uh, uh, product if we take it comes uh, mu ac uh, by 2 cos of omega c minus omega m into t minus mu ac by 2 uh, cos of omega c plus omega m into t so from the given expression it is uh, obvious uh, we obtain three type of frequency ok 
सो फ्रीक्वेंसी है रेंज ओमेगा सी ओमेगा सी माइनस ओमेगा एम एंड ओमेगा सी प्लस ओमेगा एम ओके सो वी आर नॉट ऑप्टेनिंग द मॉडलेटेड फ्रीक्वेंसी एज ओमेगा एम ओमेगा एम नॉट ऑप्टेन क्लियर सो करेक्ट ऑप्शन विल बी वन दैट इम्प्लाई वन इज करेक्ट ओके ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन ओके अगेन क्वेश्चन कम्स फ्रॉम करेंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इट इज बेस्ड ऑन सम वर्ड बेस्ड ऑन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड बैलेंस विच इज स्टॉन ग्रेट बेसिकली यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट बट इफ यू लुक एट द स्टेटमेंट टू विच इज बेस्ड ऑन द बैलेंस विथ स्टॉन ब्रिज इफ यू ड्रॉ द बैलेंस विथ स्टॉन ब्रिज एज देर इज ए गैलवेनोमीटर एंड अ बैटरी एट दिस टू पॉइंट डिस्टेंस एज आर वन आर टू आर थ्री आर फोर ओके एंड यू नो इफ द रेशियो ऑफ आर वन बाई आर टू इट इज इक्वल टू आर थ्री बाई आर फोर ओके देन दैट इम्प्लाई नो करेंट फ्लो थ्रू द गैलवेनोमीटर आई जी विल बी जीरो दैट इज द बैलेंस विट इज कॉन्ट ग्रेट ओके इफ यू नेम द पॉइंट इट इज ए बी सी डी सो इनिशियल इट इज बैलेंस ओके नाउ रियरेंज द गैलवेनोमीटर इंटरचेंज द गैलवेनोमीटर एंड बैटरी देन सेटअप एपर्स लाइक रेजिस्टेंस टेयर विल बैटरी एंड गैलवेनोमीटर रेजिस्टेंसेज आर आर वन आर टू आर थ्री आर फोर एंड इन बैटरी लेटर से वी ओके पॉइंट्स आर इट इज ए सी बी डी अगेन इफ वी रियरेंज इट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द पॉजिटिव टर्नल ऑफ द बैटरी लेटर से ए एंड हेयर इज ए निगेटिव टर्नल ऑफ द बैटरी दैट मीन्स बी ओके Now uh, two resistors from A one towards C and other towards D. A uh, sorry C and other towards D. Other towards D. Or uh, it it it's a value R one and uh, that value is R two. Okay. And uh, from B uh, we have again we have two resistor towards C R three. and towards d r4 and between c and d there is a galvanometer so c and d there is a galvanometer okay so if we apply uh, here uh, ratio comes to r1 by r3 it will be r2 by r4 okay so definitely it is against the balance with stone bridge balance with stone Bridge. That means uh, uh, null point uh, not disturbed here. Uh, so statement two here is the false. Actually here given it is disturbed. So statement two is incorrect. So option two is correct. Okay. Okay. Next one. That means setup pattern. Uh, it is based on the error analysis. Uh, uh, here, expression of surface tension is given. Uh, T as uh, uh, R H G by 2 into 10 to the power 3 unit. Okay. Uh, so, surface tension basically depends on radius, height, and G. But uh, G here is given in constant. So, if we apply the error concept, fractional error in surface tension. it will be delta r by r plus delta h by h uh, if g is variable then we have to take delta g by g okay but that value we have to take zero so actual expression is delta r by r plus delta h by h okay and what is the value of delta r here 
Uh, now look here, diameter is given 1.25 to 10 power minus 2 meter. So decimal uh, uh, digit after decimal quantity is significant with uh, uh, power. So delta R will be 0 0.01 into 10 to the power minus 2 and the expression of R 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 2 plus uh, delta H again it will be 0 0.01 into 10 to the power minus 2 divided by 1.45 into 10 to the power minus 2. Okay. So what will be the percent error in surface tension? So percent error in surface tension, it will be delta T by T into 100%. So it have nearly equal to 1.5%. So correct option is, that imply uh, option 2 is correct. Okay. Uh, now, okay. Uh, I have solved all 30 questions. On that basis, I can say physics papers are relatively easier as compared to last year papers. Uh, questions are straightforward from the given syllabus. Uh, even a student focusing on the board examination can solve all uh, even maximum question of that paper. Okay. So all the best for uh, coming J advance. Thank you.